Hello everyone, welcome back to the rationalinvestor.com's daily brief recap. Um, probably should start off, actually I was uh, pretty impressed with all of the uh, positive accolades and comments and stuff you all made uh, um, yesterday following my uh, off, two hour uh, rant there on uh, YouTube. Uh, so thank you very much, and if anything, I, I kind of tried to say yesterday, I mean, really, the whole reason why I'm doing this, I want to try and make a positive difference in your guys' lives. And what I heard back was, yes, Brian, you are making a positive difference, so shut the fuck up and get to work. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that made me very, very happy, very, very pleased to see that I, uh, uh, we are actually getting some traction with you. Um... You know, uh, 2020, 2021 now, from what I'm hearing, this uh, this is just a big, ugh, what a mess. And if anything, the current market state probably uh, is exactly what you see here with our uh, breadth indicator, just all over the map. Um, I wouldn't necessarily consider prices cheap. Frankly speaking, I don't even know how you figure out whether prices are expensive, because technically... You know, uh, we live in a U.S. dollar hegemony world, and literally over the past two or three months, the U.S. government has gone and just issued twice as much currency. So literally, the value of everything in your pocket has just fallen in half. So, you know, you look at something like the stock market and you go, oh, gee whiz, stock market's at, uh, at or near new highs. Well, no, not really. This is a facase. Are they going to take this index to new highs? Sure, they can do that, no problem. Is, is this dollar here that you see, 32.22, the same as this dollar you see over here, 32.22? No, they're completely different dollars. So, I don't know. I mean, it's 2020, 2021. Uh, caveat mTOR, go slowly. Is this the time to go and bet the farm on something like Mr. Barstool? Um, and just assume that you're going to make a shitload of money here? Ironically enough, I think this market is trading purely on momentum and uh, sentiment. So, um, you know, we are into Q2 earnings reporting, which happens at the beginning of Q3. So we're probably going to get like a picture of what corporate America looks like uh, with COVID earnings now. Um, obviously, massive changes to... Uh, Things like restaurant industry, a brick and mortar retail industry, they're in big trouble. Um, but, um, you know, obviously anything that's tech related, um, ironically enough, you're probably going to see their earnings increase. You see their stock prices go higher. You see the indexes go higher. But it, how, do, how the hell do you figure out what the hell value is in this kind of market? That's It's a tough one. And, it, you know, uh, I, we had one site gentleman, and he actually sent me the numbers again uh, in a PM just to make sure I had them. And we did the math. If you uh, double the size of the Fed's balance sheet, but you cut earnings by, uh, you know, 30% or whatever, uh, what does the S&P 500 look like in that funny sort of voodoo economics world? And we came up with a fair valuation at 3200 <laughs> So here we are. Uh you're going to look at this price chart and, you know, the public's going to look at this and go, gee whiz, we're so close to all-time highs. Man, the, everything must be awesome. <laughs> so, you know, good luck in trying to figure out valuation here in this world. All I'm going to say here is um, um, try and come up with sort of reasons for you to justify acting. And... When the market affords you the opportunity to cash in on those reasons, for heaven's sakes, take it. Um, identify all that stuff ahead of time. So then that way, when you come to uh, run your small business of trading, you don't get wrapped up in this, oh my God, is the stock market going to go to new highs? Is it going to crash? And what the hell is the value of one of these S&Ps and the amount of U.S. dollars that are outstanding? I don't think we should get wrapped up in that kind of stuff. What we should simply do is just hunt our setups, trade our setups, and live with the results. Um, so, uh, with that said, terrible backdrop to start our um, our uh, 
sort of walk through the market here to try and explain what the hell's going on. Um, I like to work off of this chart deck. Interesting, uh, you know, uh, definitely we should always start our conversation off with uh, kind of what is the U.S. hegemony proxy looking, looking like. Remember I had sort of drawn up this uh, market symmetry asking whether do we just replicate this on the other side. Man, not getting much rallies here out of U.S. dollar. And it's interesting because, I mean, like, Florida recording record cases of COVID. Um, Disney World opens up their theme park in the face of that. I mean, th this makes no sense whatsoever. It's absolute lunacy, but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, so, and I don't know whether this is a function of the powers that be want to make damn sure that the equity prices are certain levels so we don't have, you know, big margin calls based on uh, balance sheets and all that kind of stuff and earnings numbers are supposed to be pretty weak I, I mean try how do you try and explain all this stuff I, I don't think you can but anyway it is what it is uh, US dollar index is pressing lower we're back against our little trap level here I wonder whether they you know just come back to reload again uh, and of course just off of this little range that's going to be a reload zone so what a shock eh? 78.6 it looks like it's tagged uh, today actually no not quite we could get and actually you can see this trend line now we tagged it the other day smacked off it and now we're probably going to come back and kiss it again um, here in reload zones candle body lows and I think this is the original sort of reset level for the market here so me thinks over the next week or two this is going to be a real interesting tell as to sort of where the hell the world economy is going to go from here if we do see this turn back up then it means we're heading back in the soup and all hell's going to break loose if this actually and it's not even really a polite m is it but if this does m out and this turns into a massive bear flag um, and I did the bot levels that's basically projecting down to here which ironically enough actually isn't too crazy um, then I would expect the whole risk market the whole risk spectrum to just have another massive orgy leg to the upside so we're coming into decision making time here folks over the next couple of weeks this is going to be really interesting um, <clears throat> Risk on, risk off. We had sort of talked about this violently flat kind of market state. Now we're back up testing the top end of the range. What the hell is the value of one of these things in the light of the newest US dollar uh, dilution? I'm not quite sure. I do believe though, uh, and I think I've tried to illustrate this to you before, this by the market rallying all the way back up to 76 this believe it or not actually sets up kind of like a crab scenario where believe it or not I know it sounds crazy but we could either go up to 1.618 all the way up there it's definitely on the books anyway eyeball it um, or 1.272 which is right in that area so and interesting we've talked about this gap on the s p charts forever and really it should be filled in so gee whiz 1.27 1.618 that's really a question of do they rally it up fill in the gap and then we roll over or do they go up and wash the highs get a nice headline print stock markets at new highs re-elect the president he's awesome you guys are doing great of course, we talk lots about, is the stock market really at new highs? No, fakazi bullshit. But that's what it looks like to me. And, you know, should the U.S. dollar index really come off in earnest and break lower, that would open up that kind of rally window. It's definitely possible. Uh, I've been interesting, and I even put a tweet out recently, especially on Friday's break. I was wondering whether this was our top in the crude. And here we are back at our trade level again, actually a little bit underwater now. So big hurry up and do nothing. And of course, you know, should the US dollar break, should the stocks break higher? Could this uh, oil break out through the top here? Sure. It wouldn't be uh, startling. And also too, we've kind of mentioned this in the past. I mean, te pure technicians actually would like this gap to be filled in. I'll show you an example of one 
in this stock market that I took advantage of this uh, concept and didn't balk and just was patient and sure enough, they're filling in the gap now. So could we have one more leg eye here to fill in this gap up into maybe 1.445? Sure, market do any old damn thing it wants. And as I said uh, before, we will watch and we will track and we will see how many attempts does it take to actually get a trade that takes us back to the 50% rule. And what we should see over time is maybe like a minus $2 loss here, minus dollar loss here, maybe one more minus 50 cent loss, whatever, and then like a $7 gain. I mean, that's usually how trading goes. So. Anyway, we'll see what happens. This total paper trade, great demonstration for you guys. Am I taking this trade right now? I think I've told you guys before, I'm not really even interested in oil. I'd much rather have be playing. You know, if I'm going to play in the market, I would much rather play in crypto than oil. But that's just me. Um, and I would much rather play things like alternative energy stocks, like my little blink charging rather than throw money at the oil market and encourage the Arabs to continue to try to fuck us over. Um, anyway, I'm not quite sure why I said that, but I'm sure that'll generate a down vote or two. Um, moving on, so your risk on's pointing up, and we got the US dollar pointing down, so risk off, well, it shouldn't surprise us uh, to see bonds are kind of waffling here. Um, doesn't look like we actually hit the uh, ABCD objective. Interesting how we came into reload zones. Really good analogy of that. Wicks and tails like to be eaten. Candle bodies for trade location. Uh, 78.6s. I wouldn't fault a guy if he wanted to hit this. And uh, interestingly enough, now, um, if we do break here. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Still, I... Uh, I mean, this isn't really a trade for me. I'm just sort of talking out my butt here. Um, oh, and it never works when you want it to. It'll pick everything else but the thing that I want. There we go. Um, oh, what a mess. Anyway. Um, is that right? No. There we go. Something like that. Um, reload zones. Uh, you might even argue, actually, we're coming up against a downtrend line here. I don't know whether that high is higher than that high, though. Oh, yeah, it is. Huh. Okay. So, uh, actually, we've got a few trend lines here. I wouldn't be surprised if this actually is pretty stiff resistance in here. Yeah, so we've rallied into trend line resistance. 78.6, reload zone, wicks, candle body, the original M structure failure. So I guess you could argue I don't really have a signal here to do anything here. This is just a shooting star, and now we're getting a doji today. Maybe a fractal tomorrow. Uh, but uh, uh, pullbacks against, uh, notice there's a cheeky little gap right down below at 78.6. Could this be the scenario that that stock market and crude has another big leg higher? Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Uh, and I think I've told you guys recently, I, I don't really want to make any sort of grand conclusions on this market until we either hit the bullish upside objective off of this, had you traded that breakout, or the bearish uh, objective off of this, had you traded that. And then we'll go look at the strangle prices, see how that trade ultimately uh, developed. But the, I get the feeling uh, bonds running out of steam. And uh, stocks and risk looking uppy, so I wouldn't be surprised if bonds actually have to take a bit of a pause here. Interesting, gold kind of caught between a rock and a hard place, like I said uh, recently. Um, in that, you know, if uh, with the Fed diluting the currency, stock prices going up, you know, massive that in itself is massively inflationary. I'm sure the gold and all the gold bugs hate that immensely. And really, you might argue, same sort of thing. What is actually the value of this in today's dollars versus like a year ago? Are they the same? No. This thing's actually half the value that it is. So ironically enough, just to be equal to what the gold price was six, eight months ago, this price has to be quite a bit higher. 
And ironically enough, that might be actually the justification because you notice that uh, the previous base, right? You can make the arguments around a, a thousand bucks, eleven hundred bucks, and this for a long time was what we consider the cost of production for a lot of these gold mining companies. If you do that dilution math, then technically a thousand twelve hundred is now two thousand. 2400 so we will see new highs but you know the irony of it all is if you compare an ounce of gold here in US dollars versus an ounce of gold here in US dollars just to be equal this price actually should be like two or three times as high so in a weird sort of way I kind of think you know regardless of risk on risk off um, what the Fed has gone and done here, I actually think is actually guaranteed gold prices have to go up. Um, the problem, of course, is, you know, short-term speculation. Does markets get maybe a little too far extended? A little worried about these big gaps and, you know, where was the original breakout levels? We haven't hit move stop to scratch level. Notice how it just came in just underneath that. So that does mean that if this thing does pull back to this 1750 area, I can still technically be a buyer of this setup. Uh, and if I was going to add to the gold trade, uh, that's probably my thinking right now. Notice if we do reload zones off of this range, 61.8 takes us right back down against all these candle body lows. That gap will be filled in. 78.6 is this tail. Uh, and if you got any that uh, dip down against this trend line and this original lows, remember we talked about that line in the sand, 1666.2. Uh, my hunch is uh, any kind of dips against there, that's probably your next sort of reload for the gold move. If you're in the gold and you're enjoying the rally, try and pay yourself. I mean, gee whiz, we've had some gold stocks that have gone absolutely ballistic. And actually, it's fascinating because uh, one uh, somebody had asked yesterday in the broiler chickens video to uh, the level oneers are going through the various different fundamental model screens. And uh, one fundamental model screen that I use uh, was taught to me by an old floor broker. Watch yesterday's uh, video to get more on that. Um, you know, we had uh, this kind of action. I mean, you can go and buy your gold. That's fine. You know, twelve, thirteen hundred, fourteen, fifteen hundred. Frankly, I would much rather uh, play this kind of market where I can literally double my money in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. Bang, 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 done. <laughs> the interesting thing with this is uh, I'm a big fan of this chaos theory, um, Falgenbaum principle kind of idea. And if you look at this price chart, you can see that uh, our chaos theory here off of this recent structural bottom is 22 and a half. You can see there's a big gap here. And off of this structural bottom, uh, our Falgenbaum uh, number is 39 and a half. So I'm not really in a big hurry to let this go. It's a beautifully structured company. Um, and my cost after all commissions and fees and all that kind of crap is like 20, 21, 22 cents, somewhere in there. So I've got my order working. I'm not really in a big hurry. And clearly this is a bit ridiculous. But, I mean, do you see this in other gold stocks? Absolutely. So uh, I've got another one um, that uh, is an also another one of those VCIM names. And I tell you, when these VCIM names go, holy free holies, look out. Um, I'm not quite sure where it is, but uh, TBR. So here's another one where uh, it is sort of a gold market proxy. Uh, no, that's not it. What the hell is that? TBR? Timberline. There it is. Anybody who followed, uh, look at that. Doink, fog, and bomb up the bum. Boom. <laughs> I mean, it's, this is ridiculous. And the worst part about it, too, I mean, I already long. This is my double level, so I'm a happy camper. Nothing to complain about. Look at the gap. Uh, basically, all they wanted to do was rally the market in to fill the gap. But I was even talking about this with the community there just a couple of weeks ago. Like, holy shit, something's going on here, folks. So uh, you can play the gold market. You can buy your bullion, sit on it, no problem. This is the way I love to play the gold market is through these fun little uh, junior uh, 
uh, resource names. <laughs> and man, when they go, they go. <laughs> um, so uh, that's sort of what I'm doing in um, in penny stock land and the way that I'm playing the gold market. I did buy some Newmont calls. Uh, the calls jumped up quite a bit, but um, that you know the Newmont stock's not really doing anything. It's probably going to follow the gold price. Boring. Let's see what it's doing. Yeah, back down on the day. So I bought here and jumped up. Now we're just doing some backfilling. And just like that gold chart, you know, if you do get a pull back down into this area and you want to join me, you know, feel free to join me. Uh, but, you know, like the, I'm not going to get a double on Newmont stock at 61, but I could get a double on the options. Um, and I can get doubles on these little penny stocks very, very quickly if uh, they get decide to run them. Keep an eye on this LAD. <laughs> you tell me, does this thing have any room to run? What letter of the alphabet does that look like? This is another one of our VCIMers. You can see the rollback. <laughs> so it's almost funny. But anyway, um, make hay while the sun's shining, right? Um, and actually, I'm a little bit slow today because uh, I did actually uh, bang out a double. Uh, and actually, a really good uh conversation to have with you guys um in the uh, stock market uh, got a nice fill here today on this thing so uh you know hopefully everybody can see uh, lots of w's bottom end of range throwing the baby out with the bath water so brian went and bought a whack of this down there i guess down uh, off of this double bottom in here um actually you know what it was it was specifically this outside upside reversal that caught my attention i think i went in uh, somewhere in this area here but this was a great analogy in that um, according to um, a lot of the work that we do, uh, remember I had showed you that crude oil there a few minutes ago. This gap all the way up, and actually interesting enough, all the way to this candle body level, this gap should be filled in. Um, and it's really just a question of you having patience and discipline and just waiting for the market to trade to that level. So you notice that that's 391. So the other day, they popped the stock up a bit, and uh, my double level is about 375. And I think I told you guys this before. My double level is actually down in here, but to pay for commissions and fees and all that crap. Uh, I just parked my order in the middle of the gap, knowing that the market should trade up and fill in the gap. Well, it's interesting. The other day, I and we'll put the gap level, say, uh, I don't know, purple. Uh, the other day, uh, they ran the market up to my level, and you notice it actually traded above my level. Uh, and I called my broker out on this. I should have been given a fill here, legally. Um... Of course, uh, in this stupid uh, computer world, no customer service. I mean, I hope you all realize computerization literally means can the customer service, fuck you. <laughs> Get in line. Um, that's, that's the world that we're living in. You think Jeff Bezos gives a flying fuck if your order doesn't make it? <laughs> Not likely. Um, having said that, uh, also, too, this is a great analogy of sort of the classic stock market in that I have my account at a bank uh, attached brokerage. Stupid. Um, and uh, these people are dinosaurs. I actually think that they actually uh, committed something illegal here. If I really wanted to be a pain in the ass, I could take this to the IDA and really cause trouble. But, you know, like I had said earlier, I was very confident that this gap would be filled in. So I just left the order and was just like, you know, do you really want to be labeled a troublemaker and all that kind of nonsense? And sure enough, you can see just a couple days later, boom, they did give me a fill here. So uh, welcome to the stock market. If anything, this was a great conversation to have with the site. Because this is a this is a conversation about people who don't really know what they're doing in the market. The brokers, believe it or not, anybody who's an order taker at one of these discount brokerage houses, any customer service person you talk to, even frankly the managers, to be perfectly honest, 
They don't know how to trade. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Oh, yes, they will recite all the latest regulatory bullshit. Make sure that, you know, uh, their legal ass is covered. But do they know how to trade and actually make money from trading? No. It's laughable. So what I think happened here is I think that the broker on their trading desk said, let's see if we can fuck with this guy. Let's see if we can get him to panic and act emotionally in the market. And I believe that they wanted me to go, well, fuck it, oh, it's all a scam, all right, fine, hit the bin. With them having the full intention to bring this market back up and fill in the technical level that should have been satisfied all along. Very bad commentary about our society. Very bad commentary on the sheer number of people in our world that really, they're just robots. Don't look at a discount brokerage firm for actually anybody to think. They don't think. In fact, they're even specifically told. You think you're fired. You do exactly what you're told, robot. Um, and it's one of the number one reasons. I used to be a trader uh, for one of these bank firms. And after a few months, I was like, this is stupidity. Fuck you. And I just walked out. Um, so, hey, Brian got his fill. Brian was patient. Brian was disciplined. Brian had perfectly realistic, justifiable levels for expecting this fill. He didn't act emotionally, and he got his level. The irony of it all is that I don't even see any reason why this stock can't trade up into this level. Great analogy of the way that the brokers tried to really fuck with me. Fantastic. Anyway, interesting uh, conversation to have with you. Uh, and anybody watching this, um, you know, uh, for the first time trading, you have to understand this is this is par for the course in this business. You have to understand, number one, the broker is not on your side. The broker is out to fuck you. Uh, they're out to take your uh, commissions. They're out to fee you. And they may even um, front run you. And they may even prevent you from actually making money <laughs> like they did here. Um, sad, sad commentary on our society. Heading over to the corn. I, of course, spent lots of time yesterday talking about sort of my expectations uh, for this market. So, you know, be sure to watch that if you want more on the corn. What I'm really looking for here, what it feels like to me, is I think we're going to have to go back up and test the top end of the range. You can see the W that came in here. Uh, lots of FUs, lots of FUs. If we start Ming out here and now we've got a cute little trend line to work with, probably if we lose this little trend line. Um, you can see now the market's got nice little wiggle room in here to play in for the next little while. But this feels... Like, uh, and keep in mind, right, uh, even if we just do simple reload zones of this range, oh, here we go again, um, we could very easily see uh, Bitcoin, uh, where did the reload zone go? Oh, it must have been the wrong one. Uh, let's go RLZ. And then flip that around. Reverse. All right. We could very easily see a rally up to uh, 9,845, all the way up to 10,100. You've heard Brian talk about candle body levels for trade location. So uh, wicks and tails like to be eaten. All these trap bulls up here would love to get released. So believe it or not, folks, I know it's crazy, but I wouldn't be surprised to see the corn right back up at 10 Gs again here. And, of course, like we said just a moment ago, I mean, if the risk on, if we just go into fucking Orgy Central here, and to me, this is total 1929. I think this is really China's 1929. It'll be really, I, and actually, I think I really want to start accumulating some. I had said, you know, it's interesting. I follow this one model, total tangent here, sorry. Follow this one model that uh, looks at 52-week ranges and then just looks at uh, simple moving average relationships. And uh, this one model that I follow 
it wants me to go the only buy it has in the stock market right now is on inverse Japanese uh, stock index ETFs <laughs> so in essence it wants me now to go and short the Japanese stock market I do believe that if there is a crash scenario developing for this fall and I've said this to you guys before in the 1980 recession the international markets got absolutely destroyed commodities destroyed but the US sort of muddled along and if you go look at the price charts Joe Granville made a bearish call in 1980 and that was the worst call you could possibly make so I might make the argument in fact I am making the argument with my own money that any kind of weakness into this fall you buy your cryptocurrencies, you buy your uh, big U.S. growth stocks, um, you buy your crypto-related stocks uh, for this next coming growth cycle, buy weakness. And I've actually seen a number of different media outlets say the same thing. Buy the fucking dip. The market's going to dip this fall. It's not going to be as bad here in North America and maybe Europe as it will be over in things like Asia, but buy the fucking dip. Having said that, I actually wouldn't mind, and I don't know one gentleman, I uh, used to go by the name of the Rational Millionaire on the site, and he was uh, loading up on, um, on put options on the Hong Kong peg uh, versus the US dollar. And frankly speaking, all the writing's on the walls. Hong Kong, as we've looked at it, is no longer the same. And frankly speaking, I don't think the Chinese leadership give a shit. Uh, if I owned real estate in Hong Kong, I would be like, oh boy, this has got Sarajevo written all over it. This has got Lebanon written all over it. I don't know whether you're aware, but Lebanon actually used to be called the Paris of the Middle East. But there are not many people that knew that. So uh, Beirut, in fact, Beirut was called the uh, Paris of the Middle East. So uh, if there was one place that I would look for the crash, the quote unquote crash, and I've seen tons and tons of videos coming out of China. I mean, it's comical. They put up these massive construction projects a couple years ago, and they're already starting to degrade. The plaster's falling off the walls. The paint comes off the walls, and you see that the goddamn building's made of straw. It's like there. I could show you a video where the guy's chipping away the fucking stucco, and there isn't wood or concrete or steel holding up these buildings. It's straw. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, enough uh, rant. Brian going all crazy here again. Um, so, Bitcoin, yeah, you can see. We're kind of cutting this little triangle here. And I think that's probably where we're contained for now. And we're seeing a lot of anecdotal evidence that, you know, especially with if the stock market goes crazy, if oil breaks out higher, uh, I could see a nice rally here in the corn. I don't know whether we go to new highs. I still think this is violently flat, but we'll see. Only time will tell. Uh, where is the action in crypto? The action clearly is in the altcoins. Uh, Link. Great example of parking garage. Spent a lot of time uh, on the video today explaining this. Uh, walking through and gee whiz right into our target zone. You can see the market is stalling out. So this might be a good example where you might find people bought the link. This happens to be in US dollars. But if you like bought it versus BTC or something, maybe you're going to sell the link into the profit and then you're going to cash out of the BTC into USD. Or who knows, maybe, maybe you don't sell anything at all. What I would simply say and what I've told uh, site members is, you know, if I wanted to buy this, I just throw on RLZs. You can see where the reload zone is. You can see the original double bottom. Hell, you buy 78.6 is basically buying the original uh, double bottom breakout level there. So if I did want to buy something like this, you're too late. Yeah, the, the boat has sailed. Um, but there's so many of these. I mean, it's ridiculous. We just go through coin after coin after coin. They're all perking up here. I mean, look at that cute little guy. Our W's are W's are W's. Uh, and I tried to convey this a month or two ago. Of course, everybody shits on your head when you say that all coins are going to outperform. 
remember these are all versus Bitcoin notice a lot of these prices are up right and some of them have some half decent looking W's look at that cute little W you could have stepped in off of um, and um, I'm not as I haven't been as active in the uh, crypto space as I have uh, as I was last cycle because I you know I'm trading quite a few stocks now and commodities uh, through this but uh, I've got like a little list of uh, pieces of shit that I've bought over the past little while and you can see they're all per slowly perking up here and I think honestly this is where the money is to be made in the market um, uh, having said that uh, watch this Raven oh look at that RVN I don't think Raven's the right name for that looks like he's trying to do something keep an eye out there folks and of course if that's on volume oh boy um, I remember uh, uh, Chico Crypto Dude. Uh, he was all excited about the link and the XTC, and the link, of course, just took off like a rocket here. Way to go, Crypto Chico. But he was also super jazzed about this XTZ. I'm, I, and, you know, follow his feed, so go subscribe to his channel. I do remember he was interested in this one. And I just happened to see that uh, it looks like we're botting out here. So, uh, just like you saw off of his last pick, and I, I get the feeling that he does some very, very good uh, research. Um, so it doesn't surprise me his names are doing well. Um, but, you know, uh, as a trader, you know, what I like to do is just listen to all these smarty cats and go, okay, well, uh, this is my sort of universe of charts that I'm interested in now. And now I'm going to apply all my trading metrics and see if I can trade this thing and make some money from trading. So right now I'm kind of seeing, do you notice how the market, you know, went zipping up a little too far too fast there. But notice how it came back down, respected, then came back down against these lows. Here we are back at this level. This is starting to look like it's trying to firm up, getting ready for its next leg higher. And just like you saw that link, I mean, you don't want to see something funny here. I'm kind of just wasting time here today. Hope you guys are getting some value out of this. Uh, we could actually do just play connect the dots. Actually, that's not the best one. Let's go like this. Boobity boo, boobity boo. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing's up here at some point down the road. You can see, doink, consolidate, doink. So, um. Higher highs and higher lows defines a bull market. Get out there and shop. I mean, I don't know whether I would buy this here. It's just it caught my attention. Um, and, of course, like I said, I mean, geez, I'm so active. And a whole bunch of stuff. I don't really need to chase anything. But, you know, as these things pop up, I'll pay myself as they double and just get free positions, get all my money back in my hands, and throw the free coins on the pile. Um Specifically for you guys today, I wanted to give a shout out to Kevin because, I mean, like I tell you, I don't reinvent the wheel here. I understand some basic principles and I understand some, you know, stuff I've learned over 30 years. And then what I really try and do is just convey that message to other people who are interested and then just watch them. Hey, I want to make you guys famous. So uh, this is a coin uh, that uh, Kevin was talking about. I remember him specifically talking in TRI SOF meetings. Mind you, we don't talk too much crypto there. But in daily briefs, and he might have even, uh, you know, he comes on on Tuesdays. On uh, He'll be on tomorrow. Um, and uh, this was a name he was very interested in. And he told me this morning that, uh, yep, I just banged out a double, got my free coins, and I'm a happy camper. So it's just such a great analogy of what we do. You know, we just come to the market and run our small business of trading, and we don't really know what's going to happen one day to the next. But when the market affords us the opportunity to get paid, try and ring the reg register. At the very least, take partial profits um, and, um, and put yourself in a position of strength. Remember, we had mused, and I suppose with that link doing its thing, we had mused about was this going to be a brick wall of resistance? And frankly speaking, I would have said yes. But in this crazy COVID, Fed printing press, who knows what the fuck the value of anything is, um, <laughs> show me a new high and I'll show you something. So uh, as it stands right now, I think probably the market is bounded between these two trend lines and we could just chop our way, choppy chop, choppy chop as we move higher. 
And there ain't no M's here, so I uh, wouldn't step in front of that train right now. And anybody who did sort of think, well, you know, M, maybe I'll sh short this and look for a test of the 50% roll, which is completely logical. You better respect your risk management rules and, um, and clean up uh, um, failed trades. Really, that's all it is, just a failed setup. So just clean it up, move on. So that's sort of the market state. I mean, I know these uh, charts are getting insanely busy. Uh, but it's a lot of fun to uh, chat with you guys uh, Monday to Friday and give you sort of that perspective on what I'm seeing in the market. Um, slow and steady wins the race, right? Uh, don't take no wooden nickels. Um, obviously, the market seems to be in a relatively good mood right now, so enjoy it. Uh, maybe take the time when things aren't so bad, stocks are back up top of the range, just go look at your portfolio and just say, well, you know, can we, um, is, is, is it worth maybe just cleaning things up now? You know, maybe you bought a whack of stock in your 401k on this big move up. You were scared shitless through the dump. Um, and actually, I guess that's all this. And now that they've brought the market right back up into where we basically were the end of last year, actually all through January, that's basically where we are now. Remember I told you about the absolute incredible fraud that I think that all of Wall Street pulled on on uh, USA and the world here through that January leap expiry? Well, gee whiz, look, we're getting closer to those levels again. So, <laughs> you know, maybe take the opportunity and if you didn't want to be in stocks, if you want to just maybe clean up through 2020, 2021, maybe take this opportunity and clean things up a bit. Okay, everybody, I uh, hope you uh, have yourselves a great rest of your day. All the best, and bye for now.